Hey friends, how you doing? Well, wasn't yesterday a funny old day? I, uh, my, my arse is black and blue from yesterday. Um, I had a, in fact, I'll show you my, I'll pull up my profile on chess.com. I insisted on playing chess, right? So this is not logged in. So, uh, yeah, basically I, I just lost to everybody. So I started the day, I mean, the previous day I was 1538. And by the end of the day, I was 1439. In fact, I dipped under 1400, I think, at one point. I lost to everybody. I got 1300s. Dallas Dog, 1314, kicked my ass. Um, Uli, 2811, 1362, kicked my ass. Everybody had a piece of me yesterday. And then um, later on in the day, I did a hack and bounced back with six straight wins. Uh, which was lots of fun, including an eight move and a six move. There you go. Uh, and they were, by the way, a Dima Dum against the French and the opponent just resigned. He didn't have to resign. And the other one was the um, the Karakhan, Oh No My Queen trap. And I, and I mated him with the Oh No My Queen. He accepted the Queen and got mated. So, yeah, funny old day. So what was the hack? What, what turned me from all red lights to all green lights? Um... So I'm um, obviously, as you know, I'm experimenting with a lot of kind of mental performance ideas. And this one was, well, I took a break for, for starters, went and had a shower and I took a salt shot. So that's one teaspoon of, of good Celtic sea salt in water in one. Okay. And um, that can help balance electrolytes if your electrolytes are low and low, low electrolytes means low brain performance. I've got a whole list of different things that I'm trying at the moment. But I think the the biggest thing for yesterday, the biggest cause of the of the the red slide in into doom and depression was literally bad sleep. I hadn't slept well the night before, it was a full moon, just didn't have enough sleep. I simply shouldn't have played chess, right? Well, if you if you have one two bad games in a row, just do something else, please. Anyway, so, one of the most painful and embarrassing things, but very instructive things that happened to me yesterday was this. I fell victim to a trap. I don't know if I've ever fell into this before because it's in the Dutch and it's the Hopton attack comes with a classic trap, which I probably would have spotted if I'd been a little bit more awake. So let me first of all show you the trap. And then if you are a Dutch player, then... Um, I'll show you a very simple way to avoid getting stung by this. Also, if you are like a D4 player and you face the Dutch and you hate facing the Dutch, this is really spiky. So here I've got the Lee Chess book set to 1400 to 2000. Okay, so the intermediate range, basically. Okay, so the Dutch starts with D4 and pawn to F5. So far, so good. And there are there are many systems. You could play the classical. You could play the Leningrad. Um, you could play the Stonewall as well, I think, which is that one. Uh, there's three three main systems in the Dutch. Now, if you are a Leningrad player, then that is going to help you out here because you can do... You can get a, a reasonable Leningrad structure is the best response to the Hopton attack. So what is the Hopton attack? Bishop g5. And this is a real pain in the ass. It's a proper pain in the ass. We can't push the e pawn because our queen will hang. Right? Um, if we bring your knight straight there, they can take your knight. You'll probably recapture with an e pawn. You don't get your, your normal Dutch setup. It's, it's really ugly, but it gets worse. If you think, Bishop, you know, I'm going to punish this. Get out of my space. You push h6. They drop back. You push again, right? They drop back. In fact, they don't even have to drop back in that case, right? What if they just play e4? And this is really sexy. And, and white goes, are you mad? Takes. Queen h5, checkmate. The king has nowhere to go, right? It's like a fool's mate. The f-pawn has moved. The e-pawn has not. The king is out of squares. And as we all know, the knight, the king's knight is on the wrong colour to block 
this because the King's Knight is on a light square, which means it can only jump to dark squares, and that doesn't help. Okay, so there you go. So that's one way it can happen. If they retreat the bishop again, you attack again, they just push the e-pawn again. And you go, are you mad? Which is exactly what happened in my game. Checkmate again. All right, so don't do this, children. So you're a Dutch player. You're following chess boot camp, so you're probably a Leningrad Dutch player. And what do you do if you are faced with this? I'm going to look at just four, four of the most common lines that you will see. Okay, here is the Hopton attack. Now, all we do is chill, right? We're Leningrad players. We have nothing to fear. G6 like normal. Yeah, I mean, normally you might play your knight out first, okay? But G6 you can get away with just fine. Now here there are two, maybe three main moves. So the, the most common that you will face at intermediate level is e3. Because they're bishops on the outside of the pawn chain, right? Um, and it's weird, isn't it? Like, we, we don't fear the London much, but this slight change? Ooh. Okay, so let's say they push e3. And white's only slightly better, right? You can push... Bishop g7 is the most common move here, played by black. Okay, um, and black does win 45 to 49, so it's kind of equalizing, You, but you can also play this move. This is absolutely fine, right? Now, and this is basically the move that you have to remember against the Hopton. Okay, so this is a very simplified version. <clears throat> um, Stefan from Hanging Pawns has done a, a full video on this. I will link to his video as well if you really want to go deep into this, particularly with the white pieces you might want to understand the theory more he's very good at that stuff okay kill everybody stefan here okay and um so what's the idea of knight h6 well if they take you recapture with a bishop and you've got free development okay yeah your bishop's staring at this pawn but you've got a bishop out on the board um and white's development goes back down to zero they go all the way down the snake and they start to start back at square one right and we're actually fine. So if they take here, blah, blah, it's minus 0.1 in black's favor. And black, this position has been reached eight times, sorry, 10 times, and black has won eight of those. White has won one, and there's been one draw. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. Okay, so there's a couple of common things. So we're going to look at the knight f3 option first. Knight f3 is the most common move. And, um, and here... This is the point. You swing your knight back round. Okay, we are determined to eliminate that bishop at all costs. Win the bishop pair. If they retreat, just go back to Leningrad. Right, one way ticket to Leningrad, please. Okay, they'll probably bring out their bishop, and Black does very well indeed here. D five. Remember this move. If a minor piece ever comes to one of these squares, you throw in D five with tempo. Uh, their bishop will almost certainly drop back, and you're absolutely fine. Play on, right? So that's 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 e3. Okay, you bring your knight out. It looks a bit weird, but the idea is they're going to spin round and attack this bishop. Okay, e3, most common move. You do that, and if knight f3, you just crack on with the plan. Okay, so far so normal. Okay, the second most common move at the, the stronger intermediate level is actually h4 in this position. So here, they've pushed e3, you play your knight h6. We're going to flip round, attack that bishop. They do this, it's not fantastic. Again, just flip round with the knight. They do this, you can now push d6. In fact, you, you pretty much kind of, well, I mean, the, 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 the engine says bishop here. So you, you're fine, you know, it's half a pawn in white's favour, which is where white starts so again you can push d6 do that you're going to get castled crack on and play your game and you've got a structure that you recognize this is the point yeah the knight isn't on here but the knight is not badly placed there either a couple more ideas uh if they don't play e3 the immediate knight c3 they might also play knight f3 earlier on which is all very similar okay again knights are there they strike out in the middle so what should we do? Flip round, attack the bishop. It comes with tempo. This this doesn't matter, right? You attack the piece. Now if h4, h4, I mean, bishop e3 is, is the, the more common move. 
So I've just expanded it down the, the range a bit. Bishop b3 is, is okay for them. If they do this, you just capture in the middle. Again, like we said, any minor piece jumps on here, you hit it with a pawn. Knight retreats, and we are equal. Black has an equal position. You're going to stick your bishop there. You're going to castle and crack on. Okay. And one final one, we'll just look at very quickly. Okay. So this is all you have to remember. All right. Hopton attack. You, we're going to play g6, and you're going to try this maneuver. Okay. Queen e2. Queen e2 is also um, an idea for black. Defending the bishop. They don't want to lose the bishop. Okay. And the same thing, right? Pawn jumps there, you grab it. We're gonna we're gonna get castled, we're gonna get our rook on the semi-open file, and again, plus four in white's favour. Okay, you can play d5, kick the knight away, and they actually here have to play their knight to here, or else black is actually slightly better. So the Hopton attack, not to be feared, okay. First move is pawn to g6. Pretty much whatever white does, you can play your knight here, flip it around and attack the bishop and you shouldn't have anything to fear. And you shouldn't end up with your pants around your ankles like I did yesterday. So there you go, hope that's useful. And white players, like if you really hate the Dutch, this is a spicy opening, particularly in bullet and blitz where you'll probably get quite a few quick wins with this. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.